Hello, my name is Larry Kearney, and I am a deacon at St. Thomas the Apostle Roman Catholic Church here in Naperville. Here today to uh, preside at our Tuesday prayer service. As long as COVID-19 is keeping us from being able to be in full community, it's good that we gather at least via internet to, uh, to worship the Lord, to give thanks for all that God has done for us, and to try to more deeply understand God's word through sacred scripture. And that's a particularly important point to make today. I'm going to focus mostly on our first reading because it's one of those readings that cries out how important it is to not just read the sacred scriptures uh, and take from it whatever you see on the surface, but to understand the New Testament, you must understand what it was like to be a Jew in Palestine in what we call the first century under Roman rule and oppressed people. And it's critically important to understand throughout the Hebrew scriptures, the New Testament, that you have to understand the cultures and the times and how people did not know so many of the things that we know today. And so they interpret them in the way that they think God works. We have the benefit of having had Jesus Christ to live and die, rise, and to leave us behind the true meaning of what God is all about, what God is asking from us. And so with that in mind, uh, let us first take a moment to greet anyone who may be around you. And so we begin, as we begin all things, by letting God give us a hug, which means we place our left hand on our hearts and begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you felt the hug. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, whom I so dearly love, to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, we use this time to call to mind our sins, the penitential rite. But it's so very important that we never examine our conscience, we never call to mind our sins, without being equally aware of God's divine and everlasting, never-ending love for us, that there is nothing we could ever do that is beyond God's forgiveness. And not only God seeks to forgive us, but God seeks to heal us as well. And so in that understanding, let us pause now and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you come to us in the Hebrew scriptures, sometimes as a vengeful God. For the times we've been vengeful to others, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in our gospel today, you prove that you are with us, even in the most difficult of circumstances. For the times we've not stood by others in their time of need, we pray, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the gift of entering so deeply into your love, that everyone we see, we see as our brother or sister, everyone we see in need, we see as someone whom we need to step in and to place ourselves at their service for their sake. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And so we pray. Uh, today is the Feast of the 
early martyrs of the church, those who were martyred under Emperor Nero. So we pray, Lord, may the victory of your martyrs give us joy. May their example strengthen our faith and their prayers give us renewed courage. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our readings today, the first reading comes from the book of Amos. Hear this word, O children of Israel, that the Lord pronounces over you, over the whole family that I have brought up from the land of Egypt. You alone have I favored more than all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your crimes. Do two walk together unless they have agreed? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from its den unless it has seized something? Is a bird brought to earth by a snare when there is no lure for it? Does a snare spring up from the ground without catching anything? If the trumpet sounds in the city, will the people not be frightened? If evil befalls the city, has not the Lord caused it? Indeed, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The lion roars, who will not be afraid. The God, God speaks, who will not prophesy. I brought upon you such upheaval as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You were like a brand plucked from the fire. Yet you returned not to me, says the Lord. So now I will deal with you in my own way, O Israel. And since I deal with you this way, you prepare to meet your God, O Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, lead me in your justice, Lord. At dawn, I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O oh God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lead me in your justice, Lord. But I, because of your abundant mercy, will enter your house. I will worship at your holy temple in fear of you, O Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves, but he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this, whom even the winds and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 
As I said earlier, it's so important to understand the Hebrew culture in the Old Testament so that we may understand what God is saying to us today. For millennia, we believed that the Old Testament, for example, Genesis, is all exactly how it happened. Adam and Eve, the, the flood with Noah, Methuselah living 900 years, the Tower of Babel, all of those things. We now understand that scripture is not a historical understanding of God. It's a theological understanding of God. So while there was no Adam and Eve or no flood and Methuselah didn't live 900 years, it doesn't mean that these readings aren't important. They do point out very important lessons. But we can't get caught up in being literal. And if you want to see a perfect example, it's, it's in our gospel today. Both Matthew and Mark tell this story of Jesus calming the sea. And they each approach it from a different direction. They each say it in a different way, with a different meaning. That's not unusual. We have the Beatitudes, and we have them in Matthew, and we have them in Luke. Matthew claims that this sermon with the Beatitudes was given from a mountain. And he specifically places the Beatitudes being given from a mountain because he was writing for the Hebrew people, for the Jewish people. And they understood in their culture that all of the great things the lessons and the points God was making to God's people all happened on a mountain. Luke was writing for Gentiles who didn't care anything about a mountain. A mountain of teaching meant nothing to them. So Luke places it on a level plane. So here in Amos, we have this pretty scary image of God that God is going to punish that God is going to take revenge on us for not following God's word. Well, that was the way they saw God. In those early, early times, not understanding things that are natural phenomena or things that we now know have a logical background, they didn't have. And one of the things that strikes me most, and we still read it in sacred scripture, is we talk about fear of the Lord. Well, there's nothing to fear from the Lord. Nothing. Because God is love. And all of the three major faith traditions, all of us descended from Abraham, understand now that God is love. And if we accept that God is love, then we have to accept God's limitations. And we think, well, <laughs> no, there's no limitations to God. God is God. God can do anything. The answer to that is no. God can only do loving things. This God that Abrams was talking about, was the way he understood God as vengeful. But then God came and dwelt among us in Jesus. And instead of saying fear of the Lord, we say peace, be at peace and don't be afraid. That's very important. It's an extremely opposite direction of what we have come to see from the Hebrew scriptures. But if God is love, then God, as I said, can only do loving things. God does not give us cancer. God did not create the coronavirus. God does not kill our children in, in drunk driving accidents. When someone we love dies, 
either tragically, prematurely, whatever it might be, and someone comes up to the family at the wake service and says, oh, it was God's will. Well, they're trying to comfort you, but it isn't God's will. God's will is that we live and love, and the evil things, the bad things that happen to us come from the broken condition of the world. We've tried to give it names such as original sin, but it's really the exercise of our free will that has caused the world to be the way it is. It isn't God who has polluted the earth. It isn't God who is making the polar ice cap melt. It isn't God who is causing earthquakes, intentionally killing people. No. God is love. And yes, we're all going to die. So this idea of, you know, save us because we fear we're going to die. Well, maybe we are under different circumstances, but it isn't God who's doing it. It isn't God who makes us sick, but it is God who is in the boat with us. It is the God who came and dwelt among us. It is the God who taught us to love one another, no matter what, no matter who, and especially those whom we might call our enemies, or they might call us their enemies. We have a lot of work to do in this world. There is a great deal of fear. There is a great deal of animosity among peoples here in our own country. There is a great deal that needs to be done to bring about healing. And so that is the job that God has given to us. We are the children of God. We are the body of, of Christ. And so we are the ones charged by God to do all that we can to bring about peace. And we start it within our own hearts. We start it with our families. We start it with forgiveness. We start it with asking for forgiveness. And we start it by praying regularly, reading scripture in a way that we understand God's loving message, because that ties us closer to God, gives us the strength and the grace to truly be the people of God, that we would not be afraid to do whatever it is that God calls us to do in God's own loving way. And so now this is the time when we offer to God our prayers, when we ask God for whatever it is that we're looking for from God on this day. So we pray for our church, created by divine mercy. May it never lose sight of its human frailty and never, and never and the need for humility before God and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for an end to violence in all of its ugly forms, violence between people who call God by a different name, violence in our city streets, violence by people who use legal civil protest as a means to demean, demand, to damage, and to destroy, violence against women and children and the elderly, domestic violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick in mind, body, and spirit, and for all those who take care of them, both in and out of the hospital, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are imprisoned, imprisoned in any way, justly or unjustly, by hate and fear, by poverty, loneliness, homelessness, injustice, by addictions of every kind, especially to drugs and alcohol, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died and now rest in God's loving, merciful, and eternal embrace. And for their family and friends left behind to grieve their passing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, ever caring, ever strong, you are father to us, you are mother to us. You are all that is good, holy, glorious, and majestic, and we thank you for all of the gifts you give. We thank you especially for this opportunity to come together to offer our prayers and our petitions to you. We do so in confidence, knowing that you will answer them in your holy time and according to your holy will, for we ask them in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, let us gather together as best as we can with social distancing, <clears throat> and let us together pray the very prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, <clears throat> from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I leave with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us, as appropriate, show to one another a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And so now we recite an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot <clears throat> at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me from being separated from you. Amen. As we prepare to end our service, we pray the Ampathon. No one has greater love, says the Lord, than those who lay down their lives for their friends. And so we pray. Loving and gracious God, may this sacrament that we have received spiritually be truly the sacrament we receive physically in your body and your blood. Grace us that we may go forward 
to live lives worthy of your calling. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Now, as I always do, I'll ask a question, I'll give you the answer, and then I'll ask the question again so that you can say the answer out loud. The question is, who are you? And the answer is the body of Christ. And so I ask, who are you? Yes, you are indeed the body of Christ. And so in that dignity, in that joy, in that challenge, lift up your eyes, your heads, and your hearts, and prepare to receive God's most beautiful blessing. <clears throat> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God come down upon you and remain with you forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day, everyone.